Heyo, my Planet Coaster friends, Johnny5 Alive here, and welcome to the Anniversary Update 1.4 is now live, and here are the patch notes. A quick look at them here, guys. We're going to go through all this stuff in game and buckle up, get your popcorn, do what you got to do. This is going to be a long video. Tons of new stuff, so staff building, a new facility for maintaining your staff. We're going to check this out in game. I'm essentially going to try and hit these things up one by one. Scenario editor, finally, I am freaking out. This is... This is what I've been waiting for. This is what I've always wanted from the game. And this is going to add a whole lot of rejuvenation and spark into the game. Being able to create your own scenarios. It's huge. So that's probably something we're going to look at first here. Vendors now leave their shops and they go do stuff at the park management building. Um, so that's neat. And I guess you'll have to have other people to swap in and out. So tons of new uh, simulation aspects there. More extras for shops. Added larger selection of extras to shop items and differing effects. Effects. so i'm assuming that's like add more ice to drinks and different things like that picnic tables this is huge construct your food courts some guests leave trash at tables after and you use janitors to clean it up guests will prefer to sit at picnic table picnic benches and eat and drink advertise your attractions link signs and information booths to your rides and shops guest group now have more individuality uh guest groups now have a chance to spawn with one of over 20 traits these traits incline groups to particular rides tolerances money or interests you can control these types of traits that spawn in your own scenarios that's really cool change cars and track rides on coasters this is really really cool and it's going to add a whole lot of longevity to the coaster spotlights and many many refreshing new episodes to come create new coasters and tracked ride combinations you can now swap coasters and tracked ride cars with a selection of combinations the coaster track ride cars will conform to the original track restrictions so you can create entirely new ride experiences holy moly cars not designed to invert will get fear and nausea penalty there is an option to increase possible combinations in game options but this may have visual clipping and default audio experience for tracks i don't know if i like the fact that they did this it's kind of cheaty but it's there for an option this just means like you're gonna have like an inverted coaster train on a wooden coaster it's gonna kind of just be like flying <laughs> it might be a little bit weird or it'll be like actually mounted properly and it'll be going underneath the wooden coaster just barreling through all the supports it's gonna have one of the two negative adverse effects so that's absolutely crazy but the actual combinations i don't know if they mean we can actually use the new motion track ride on a wooden coaster so we can actually control the yaw the pitch while on a wooden coaster that would be nuts i guess we're gonna find out today guys um but there's a ton of crazy things to play with with just that alone uh, new trigger modes and trigger durations even more flexibility and spectacular shows the duration of the effects is now part of the trigger source so you can set different duration each time you trigger an effect multiple effects have options and play at set intervals all time on a trigger triggerable objects wow so triggers much more improved a lot of people are gonna love that toilets now need cleaning keep them tidy with janitors that's cool um track rides can now also be dueling wow that's great disable track limit options Option. Game options loosen track restrictions on coasters. Cars designed not to invert will get fear and nausea penalty. So I read on this on the other quick preview. It's essentially saying that uh, you can make a wooden coaster invert now. I think it adds a lot more replayability to the game, but the coaster enthusiasts are going to hate it. <laughs> We're going to see some crazy spotlights in the coming months here, guys. It's going to be gnarly. Uh, background swap for custom biomes. That's good. So you can have a tropical bi biome picture in the background of a snowy alpine map if you want. So two new rides. We'll check those out in game. Three new coasters. We'll check those out in game as well. New scenarios. Gulpy Island Paradise. Ooh, I love Gulpy. This sounds exciting. Added four staff building blueprints to get over 40 blueprints of buildings from the previous scenarios. Oh, and over 40 blueprints. Okay, so they took buildings from the scenarios, saved them off as blueprints, and put them into the menu that comes default with the game. This is great. I was actually just talking about this in one of my videos saying I wish they had more out of the box blueprints at the games. Um, so now they finally did that. So that's cool. Uh, new scenery, curbs and barriers in three different sizes, perfect for influencing guest navigation. Curbs will influ influence the guests not to walk over them. Barriers will stop guests walking through them under any circumstances. This is amazing. I was actually just talking about this in one of my spotlights. Um, you guys will see the recording. It was uh, Telu. And, and essentially what this means 
means is when you when you build these shops and facilities and you have this wall and you pad the whole inside of the shop, you never you always had to leave a space around the whole building because if you had pathing on the outside of that wall, it would walk through the walls. Now what you do is you stuff barriers in between all your walls. Now I don't know if barriers are going to be prohibited or uh, restricted to being placed on pathing only. I really hope that they are an asset in the game so that we can actually put barriers through our walls in our blueprints so that way when someone goes to do the pathing um it's the barriers are already there for them added six picnic tables nine canopies of all themes uh plus alternate bench styles new benches picnic tables for spooky pack owners oh that's cool um added 13 autumnal trees added some new variations of scaffolding uh from the summer update added two frontier expo coin statues for everyone added new hotkey to focus the camera on currently selected scenery the default is h that's cool. Added 11 new shirt patterns for avatars and guests to wear. That's kind of neat. Added guest thoughts to rides with very bad excitement, fear, and nausea ratings. That's really good feedback. <laughs> guests now react to scary scenery. That's cool. The number of guests in a group affects how long it takes the vendors to serve them. This is actually pretty good for um, the, having a reason to have two chief beef shops next to each other. That's good. And then a whole bunch of bug fixes, guys. So let's dive into the game and take a look at all this stuff. All right, guys, staff management buildings. Here's a little uh, overview of some stuff. Scenario, editor, autumn scenery, new rides and coasters. Why do I not have sound? New career set available. Oh, here we go. All right. Well, I want to take a peek at the career set. We're going to actually go look at the levels after. At the end, Gulpy. <laughs> Just one island, or one one level. Hmm. All right, well, we'll definitely go check that out. All right, guys, scenario editor. Create and edit your own custom scenarios. Player edit previously created downloaded scenarios. Open an existing park as a new scenario. New scenario, create a scenario from scratch. Well, we're gonna test this, guys, because this is what I was hoping for. All right, my last save on Yeti Land. Uh, as a scenario, we're going to see if we can turn Yeti Land into a scenario. We're not going to do the whole thing. We're just going to tinker with it, I suppose, and uh, see how this goes. Um, I'm not going to publish it or anything, but I just want to see the options and see what's available to us. All right, setting up your park. You control everything. You can lock down your ride, shops, buildings, and sceneries. Players cannot delete these and will have to build around your obstacles you place for them. Playing and sharing. Like blueprints and parks, you can share scenarios via the workshop. I smell a new submission. Scenario spotlight. Use the scenario creator to play around with the settings like objectives, research, demographics, finances, staff, and more. Holy freaking moly. Uh, oh, this is so cool already. Add new objectives, choose objectives, company value, park profits, park value, pay off your loans, total money, firework display, guest count. Uh, wow, they thought of it all. It's all here. Catch pickpockets, hire staff. Uh, <laughs> build coasters. Let's see here. Now, I'm assuming it's not going to include the ones that are already built for you, like Darla here. Wow, you can say build up to 10 coasters. Apply to go-karts instead of go coasters. Oh, that's interesting. All right, look at that. We could say build five coasters with the minimum excite rating of eight. Now, this is really cool. We could say build one coaster with the excitement rating of nine. You got to really go crazy and get that a perfect excitement coaster. And you can keep adding conditions. And it has to have a maximum drop, a, a minimum drop of 200 meters. That's it. <laughs> I wanted to do a Gaussian drop. How high is the map? 600, 750 meters? I want to do a 500 meter max drop or minimum drop. Very cool. And there it is. And then we'll just do a company value of $200,000? I don't like those numbers. I wish we could tweak that a little bit more. I, I, want, I want to go in there and really play with the numbers and make a park worth, you know, $2 billion. I wish we could tweak that stuff a little bit company value of 200,000 seems pretty low and the guest target number you can only have 2,000 guests huh so it seems like there's a lot of limitations on this so far you know what I'm gonna do pause it it's so loud the background um park place guest spawner points and edit boundaries of the park Ooh. look at this guys we can now change the width Okay, I was talking about how Yeti Land was on 
the when when the winter map first came out, it was like a quarter of the size. I wasn't able to make Yeti land that big. Well, now I'm able to do that, but I don't think I want to because it's all built to this perfect size. But there you go. You can now make the go back and edit the size of your parks. Hmm. I mean, I, I might do it so I can round it off a bit and make it less square. Oh my god, Yeti Land's going to need a lot more work now. Holy moly, this is a game changer. And you can also change the height, make coasters. Galcyon's going to love this one, making coasters go all the way up there. Let's see how high we can get this. Okay, not too much higher, but even still. <laughs> oh, that gives you a lot of uh, possibilities. Boundary offset. What's this? I can't. I can't edit the value. Guess spawn points. Add a spawn point. Now guess will spawn there. Has to be on perfect flat ground. I take it. And let's close that off. So if we oh we could just connect paths to it. So they spawn there. So essentially what you could do is kind of like hide it underneath uh, some terrain. Ah! You guys get it. So they're just coming out of this like hill here. Ah, I need to make that perfect. But you get the idea. So they could just be coming out of these like caves and stuff. And I'm assuming you could, if, if I, I could probably even put one up here. I could put a spawn point up here. So yeah, you can have them spawning in at like the top of, if you do like a, oh, you could do a floating island park in the sky, like Final Fantasy floating island stuff, and the guests just spawn up there. You don't need any crazy pathways or anything like that. Yeah, that's cool. Okay, what other options do we have here? Finances, starting money, unlimited money. So you give people unlimited money if you want. A certain amount of money to start with. Uh, refund multiplier. Um, that's cool. So you can make it so people get 100% of their money back if they delete a ride or none of their money back. You can edit all the loans available during play. Oh, so you can basically just checkbox what loans they're going to have available to them. So it's a set amount of five different loan values. Okay. I really wish we could edit how much money, like the real numbers. Um, I was hoping for a little bit more options in terms of like how much the guests are willing to spend on a burger and things like that. Oh, there's a lot more loans, short loans. Okay, what, what kind of loans were those? Challenge loans, I see. Then there's short loans, long loans, and miscellaneous. I mean, having all these checkboxes is great. I kind of wish they just allowed us to go add new loan. We select the amount, say how much the duration is. Uh, how much the interest is and the monthly cost and then you just create your own custom template that would have been better but not too bad research uh you could choose what you're going to research and what's available to research and this is this brings me back to the rct one days i mean you're going to make it so people have to eventually research everything but you give them stuff that's very suitable to your scenario if i'm making a tropical park or whatever i'm going to start people off so with some pip shop waters and um you know pirate scenery or whatever and then from there, I'm going to give them some unlocks that are derived towards my uh, experience. And those things they're going to unlock first. And maybe certain things are not available or are. Um, that's really cool. So pretty self-explanatory there. Marketing. Uh, you can increase the amount of campaigns you have and what campaigns are available. Uh, staff. Staff features. Energy and staff buildings. Okay, so those are like the new features in the game. You can change the difficulty. Huh. That's cool. And you can make it so <laughs> your entertainers are like super stressed out. And this is part of like the, the scenario. It's like you all your staff are underpaid, unhappy. Uh, all the entertainers are stressed out. Everybody's lazy and you have to work with it. <laughs> Security guards are lazy. <laughs> That's not good. That's hilarious. Um, now, I wonder if the players will have control over that or if that's just going to be like that for the whole duration of the game. <laughs> that might just be something you have to live with. That's pretty crazy. Guests. Guest happiness rate. Park 
attractiveness multiplier. How high can you turn this up? 500%. Interesting. Park attractiveness. Okay, so you can make it a family friendly park or all teens or evenly balanced. That's pretty cool. Chance that a guest will spawn with a trait. 100%. Presets. High. Oh, look at this. So you can make it so they spawn in with tons of cash and they're also poor. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a mix, obviously. So there's a high chance it could be either or. That's kind of neat. So you could make a scenario that like everybody's like scaredy cats and they have no money. Um, <laughs> they're or they're really poor. Um, <laughs> there's all sorts of crazy stuff in here. They get sick easy. Interesting. You can make them all fast walkers. <laughs> uh, it'll be interesting to see what kind of things people do to this but I'm interested where I'm interested to know where all this information goes because that's a lot to remember like if I go into a scenario and it's like you know you have everybody's poor and uh, they don't like thrill rides and uh, they're lazy and they hate coasters but they're big spenders and you gotta go wait what kind of things can I and can I not build because the scenario has me uh, or the people in my scenario are very inclined to do or do not do certain things so i hopefully this information can be found once you've published the scenario and it's all there for you to look at because i would hate to put down a thrill ride but none of my guests want to actually go on them uh very interesting stuff though then we got a whole thing for crime security features are on and then you could just make it so like it's it's freaking gotham city and there's five thousand pickpocketers everywhere <laughs> <laughs> That's actually kind of neat, to be honest. So once they're all done that, there's no really publish button. I'm assuming it's the same as the parks. You save it, and then um, when you go to the front page, you're going to be able to publish that as a scenario. Um, that's how I'm going to assume it works. When I actually do build this into a scenario, I'll do a complete breakdown of what I did to Yeti Land and how it's going to play and uh, things like that. I think this needs some work. We need to revisit Yeti Land. We need to finish this up and add, turn it into an actual scenario. So that'll become a thing and I'll probably do some videos on that sometime in the next month or so. Hopefully. All right, guys, that's the scenario stuff. Pretty good things in there. I do wish you could tweak the values of the the, the economy. I really wish, you know, uh, coasters didn't cost $50 to go on. And then I could increase the park value to $2 billion. Uh, make things, like, really challenging. I was hoping for a little bit more control. Um, however, there is a lot of control. And um, I'm, I'm happy with at least what we got there. You know, can't ask for everything all at once, guys. But Scenario Editor is here. And it has the general features that we were looking for. Um, and, uh, yeah, it seems great. So I'm looking forward to doing this. All right, let's go look at some other stuff, guys. All right, so here's the staff management building. It's like a bathroom, but they took the walls down. <laughs> Pretty close, right? <laughs> um, and then they just go in there. So I wonder if they added any blueprints. So they did say they went back and they improved. They added 40 new blueprints to the game that was from scenarios. So I don't know if I remember seeing Doc Brown in there, but there were some Western maps and things like that. So there's more variety here. I do wish it was sorted a little bit better, but what can you do? Yeah, some of the stuff is definitely like from the scenarios. We've seen it before, but it's technically new in terms of, hey, it's, it's in the menu now. I'm wondering if there's any staff management buildings. There we go. So there's one in the Planet Coaster vibe. Let's turn the day to... So here's a look at some staff management buildings built by Frontier. There's a Fantasy, Caribbean, and the Planet Coaster theme. They don't really have anything indicating on them that it's staff management, though. I could see people building these and being like staff management building and doing like a big sign and some crazy bells and whistles and stuff like that. Um, but this will do. It's not bad for a start. So uh, the staff just kind of wander in here and 
take breaks and get raises. So if you do give a staff a raise, they actually have to come to these buildings now. So you're, wherever you have like tons of shops, um, like I do over here, it's probably going to be wise that I put a staff management building maybe right here. <laughs> so when they get a raise, they come down here and they go and get their uh, promotion. And then they come back out and go to work. So, oh, it's been so long since I've been here, guys. It's only almost been a year now. Wowee. I'm actually kind of excited to come back here and do some stuff. Oh, we got to check out picnic tables. Picnic tables. Oh, look at this. <clears throat> Pirate tables. Um, Sci-fi. Oh, these are canopies. Oh, that's so cool. Sci-fi picnic table with a canopy. Wait, what was the uh, pirate canopy? Oh! <laughs> That's freaking amazing! Umbrellas. Benches. More benches. Oh my goodness! Okay, we've seen that before. Oh! <gasps> that one's amazing! Holy moly. I am just ruining Yeti land here. <laughs> oh, stone. Oh, that is amazing. Okay, guys, these are awesome. I'm so excited. Hooey. Look at all that. Incredible, guys. Sign and information booth advertising. Advertise your attractions. Link signs or the information booth to your rides and shops. Oh, I, I think that might just be um, set advertised destination. Oh. Check that out. I just advertised the information booth on that sign. That is very clever. So even though there doesn't show anything here, the AI, I like obviously I want to put something on that screen, some sort of advertisement, um, but this is the advertised destination. So if we move this TV over to here, Guests that walk by this TV and take a look at it are going to see or, you know, realize this destination. So they're going to kind of walk by this and go, uh oh, I want to go over here. It's kind of a way of guiding the AI. Now, I wonder what kind of bugs and interesting exploits people are going to do. Um, but it's like it, it, this coaster here. I want to advertise the crap out of it. So as the guests are pouring on through here, I should have big TVs with Darla the coaster uh, screenshots on it, but set all those screens to advertise that area. So they head straight on over there. And if I have a monorail nearby, they're going to head straight over to this, take that all the way to there and uh, get to that destination because they saw an advertisement. That is quite clever. Really like that. All right, guys, next up, we got to try this out. We can swap the cars. How do we do this? All right, guys, just my luck. Check this out. You can't swap the train of a torqued launch coaster. And my dive coaster, you can't do that either. What the heck? If you go over to this wooden coaster I placed down, you can, in fact, change it. So I could change it to uh, Gnarler, Malice Unchained, or Monster. Um, which makes sense. I mean, they said there was an option to force it. And I went into the options here, guys. Settings. And there was allow interchangeable coaster cars. But I thought they said you could do anything, but there might be some bugs. Dis disable track limits. Well, that kind of blows. I was really hoping to put like a wooden coaster on Darla. <laughs> um, what's cool here, you could show coaster name and now you can see 
Darla on the side of the coaster. So that's neat. Ha <laughs> ha. Now, you can't customize the text or the font. That's a little unfortunate. Oh well. <clears throat> so, there's the a look at the train swap, but it seems to be very specific. So I'm going to try out a few more here. Alright guys, here we have a winged coaster. And you could change this from the Black Falcon. Wow, you could do a Basilisk. Barghest. Cloud Runner, Enigma, Invincible. So essentially all the Gigas can be placed. Oh, there's way more. That's all of them. So basically anything that's made out of steel um, can be placed on here. Which is kind of confusing because why... I thought the Torque Launch Coaster is also a steel coaster. I guess it's because it has the launch feature. But I could have sworn there was a launched wing coaster. I think that might be the Cloud Runner. Now, maybe it's because I built this coaster before the update. That might be a thing. Let's try. All right, so I quickly put together a torque, and it does not have the options. So you could do a power-up, and it could do any of these. <laughs> That's cool. All right, guys, we got to try the no restrictions option here just for the sake of it. Disable track limits. Removes the limits on banking and sloping angles for most coasters. I, I thought they meant a little bit more than that. Because I'm pretty sure we could do all this stuff before that may not have been in there before. No, pretty sure it was. So the wooden coaster you can't actually do an inversion on from what I'm seeing here. Monorail still goes only eight degrees, so that doesn't work either. Nothing changed there. And nothing different about the track rides either. Hmm. All right, so we got the go-karts here. You can switch the cars out, but you can't do them individually. But it's still good. You can change them all to the Munsters DLC if you want, Back to the Future. I really wish you could do the individual cars, um, but that's quite all right. At least you have the option to swap those out now. And here we have a track ride, and it's going to let us change to the Magic Cats or the Sleigh Ride. Very cool. So I'm a little bit confused by some of these options. Uh, we're gonna have to look into it a little bit more in depth later. Uh, we're gonna I'm gonna have to go in and actually test a lot of the coasters and see what's different about them. Because in terms of the no limits, um, it may be few a few degrees here and there. But as far as I can tell, you cannot make a uh, wooden coaster do any uh, inversions, loops, corkscrews, or anything of that nature. Um, maybe some of the steel coasters that were unable to do it, like the Gigas and the Hyper Coasters. Let's, let's check those out. Okay, look at this. I have, um, a Hyper Coaster here. And it does let me go completely upside down. Which was not a thing before. But for the wooden coaster, it does not seem to be the case. The Hyper Coasters and the Giga Coasters, which were not able to invert before, they can now do that, but they don't have any preset corkscrews or any of or any of those fun features. So you can simply just make uh, Giga and Hyper Coasters more interesting, I suppose, and a little bit more extreme, but I prefer them to not be able to do those. So that feature is there if you want to, but it seems to be limited to the Hyper and Gigas, as far as I can tell. Wooden co coasters cannot do inversions, as as far as I can tell, either. So, um, interesting stuff here. And the in terms of the train swaps, it is very limited in terms of um, the, the, the design. Now, they did say something about it, like you could do whatever one you wanted, but it might cause clipping. But uh, I don't see anything... I don't see anything here. Anything ridiculous. So, inverted coasters, rival... Boa, Stingray. Makes sense. So it has all the features that I assumed it would. 
and you can just change them so long as they're the uh, proper types. Now, if anyone has found a way to put a wooden coaster on this or put one of these on a wooden coaster, let me know down in the comments below because I have enabled all the options and I certainly do not see anything like that. So for me, it seems like it's the standard train swap if it makes sense. Um, and, and other than that, there's, there's no crazy out of this world features that I thought there were going to be. So it's very mild and I'm actually, I'm actually glad they were, they were kind of reserved on the craziness. I didn't want to see all these crazy buggy coasters coming into my submission box um, and just breaking the immersion of the game. I do, however, wish I could have switched the, the torque coaster into something different. It'd be nice to have, you know, a different train being launched other than the torque. Um, well, what can you do? It is what it is. So there you go. All right, guys, new uh, flat ride here. Oh my goodness, what did they call this one? Um, rock and roll or something? I, I rode this at the P and E. You'd always the person on the outside would always get squished by their friend. Everyone just getting pulled to the outside. Um, I I always hated being on the outside. <laughs> I totally remember going on this one as a kid. That is amazing. And they'd always play some crazy rock and roll music. That's very fun. So that's the Wise Horn. Monte Leone here. Another another flat ride. It's essentially the same as this one, isn't it? What the heck just happened to this one? Uh what? When? <laughs> oh, look at that! I did not know that happened. Interesting. <laughs> Little canopy goes over top. Okay, the one I rode in real life did not do that. I was going to say... <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> that is so weird. Hopefully you could disable that option. Um, I've never been on one of these flat rides where it did that. That is crazy to me. Um, yeah, they seem like essentially the same ride, don't they? One has a top and one doesn't. And then, well, this one's actually a lot better for doing your own ride skins. So I can do all the scenery pieces that were like my hometown one, but using this. It's very interesting. So I'm, I'm assuming that little uh, canopy thingy is going to be in the sequencer. Spin, spin with canopy. So we can remove those canopies, and then, uh, and it's not going to do that anymore. There you go. All right, guys, the first coaster, the new coaster. This is the Cascade. It's a water coaster. It's got a little boat here. Um, here we go. I built the world's worst coaster. Let's <laughs> let's give it a ride. It could do a straight down drop, which is pretty interesting. Into a splash. Oh my god, it's going way too fast. <laughs> there it goes. So what's cool about this is it actually has the same kind of track features as a log flume. So you could actually just carry it along like a log flume. But then you could pull it up a lift and then drop it down. It has these little mini splash areas and uh, big splash areas. So it's a coaster plus a log flume. And it essentially has a little boat instead of a log. It's quite a cool coaster. I think there's gonna be a lot of cool spotlights coming out of this one and a lot of fun creations. It's the closest thing that we got to a water slide at this point. So I'll take it, pretty awesome. All right guys, the next coaster up is the Hop and Gas. It's essentially, uh, it's a wooden coaster, but it's like kind of a hybrid between the um, the wild most mine train kind of rides, uh, the little bucket rides, and a wooden coaster. Supports look awesome on this too, um, and it's just a four seater, so we can go sit in this. Again, the world's worst coaster design, but uh, it does all the things that the wooden coaster does. So banks hard, can go almost. It can go actually completely sideways. I don't think the wooden coaster did that. I'm not sure if that has anything to do with my no limits restrictions on it. Uh, probably does, in fact. But 
pretty standard stuff, except for the lift can't be very steep like we've seen on the wooden coaster. It's much longer. That's as steep as I could make it. Um, which is a little bit disappointing. I kind of wouldn't mind it going up quicker, kind of like you could make a wild mouse out of it. But, um, that's alright. That's a pretty fun one. The last new coaster is the Zenith. It's a hydraulic launch coaster. Uh, you can actually change it to the Tiamat or the Invincible, which is interesting. There's a look at the train. And it is basically specialized to do top hat stalls. Check this out. There it is. Did I test it? No, I didn't. Let's do it. Hopefully I set it fast enough. I Hopefully we can get up there. Oh, and it waits a sec, kind of like the Sprint 500. Weak. We're not going to make it. Oh, that's so weak. <laughs> Alright, let's try that again. A much longer launch strip this time. Now, we, we have seen people do this with, like, torque launch coasters. But this does have the unique track features and supports. So we cleared it that time. Much better. Voila! Very cool. Lovely, lovely stuff. Gulpy Island Paradise. Gulpy wants to turn this remote beachfront into a theme park, but he has no idea how to go about it. Can you help? It's going to take skillful management and a full staff roster to keep everything running smoothly. Let's take a look at this. All right. Hmm. Got a big skull over here. Does it have any coasters or anything? Doesn't really have much. I was hoping for some. I don't. It doesn't. Does it feel gulpy? I don't know. I was hoping for more iconic gulpy theming buildings and maybe a giant T Rex or something. Sculpted out of terrain. Kind of just feels like a pirate park. Hmm. I mean, that'll be a challenge, guys. Because I don't know. How, how, how do you make a park feel gulpy? Now, that'll be a challenge for you guys. Who can make the best gulpy park? <laughs> uh, scenario, I mean. Um, I mean, it looks kind of neat. Some little areas to build here and here and... Some islands to go out to, make some coasters. Not actually, it's all. It's not a whole lot of room to build. It'd be a very small park indeed. Let's take a look at the objectives. Track 500 guests, fifteen thousand dollars. Hire five vendors, thousand guests, thirty-five thousand. Hire ten vendors, fifteen hundred guests. Value of sixty thousand. Hire fifteen vendors. So it's kind of one of those shops and facilities uh, style challenges. You're gonna get flat rides and shops, and that that'll do it for you. You'll beat the whole objective. Maybe a coaster that goes around the outskirts. Um, it seems like an okay objective. But one thing I want to try, since we have guests in here, guys, is the new barriers. So let's do this barrier. Let's try these out. Ha ha. Ha-ha! Ha-ha! Where are you going to go now? Let's see how long she sits for. Did they fix this? Nope. She's done. So... What I want to try with this is, uh... Well, it'll work. If you have... I'm trying to think of an example here. So before we'd have these problems where people would pass through walls. And now what we're going to see people doing is putting barriers inside. And they're no longer going to pass through. I probably need to get rid of these ones. And they don't pass through it. So yeah, part of me wishes they just added that um, collision to all their wall pieces. But 
we can we can work with this. This is good. So um, I can see use on my shops. There was problems with my shops where I was like, ooh, well if I um, I have my building here, I can't have the outside of the building. I can't have pathing on the outside of the building because they're going to end up passing through the walls. So I always had things with a whole space in between. What I would do is fill that with gardens and stuff. But that means I can make more tightly compact buildings and just put barriers through the walls and include that with the blueprint. So very good stuff indeed. And I'm curious to try this. Okay, seems like this might actually work too. Nope. Never mind. And the last one, guys, we got autumn trees of all sorts. Look at that. Oh, it's going to be awesome to see what people do with this stuff. I mean, you know what they should do? It's just make tree the tree textures colorable. Because I would love to see some, like, blue and teal trees and do some sort of, like, avatar stuff or underwater coral stuff. Yeah, just being able to color the trees themselves would be quite amazing. But nonetheless, look at how that just pops. Changes the whole area and the vibe of everything. Really nice stuff. Love it. Beautiful. And then they said they added some new scaffolding. Uh, I'm not sure which one's the new one. Because I recognize... Oh, I think it's just these ones, honestly. They just took the wood off the top. Yeah, that might be it. Those two pieces are new. So there you go, guys. That's pretty much everything. Um, in terms of the coaster car swapping thing, I was a little bit confused. I thought I thought you were really going to actually be able to put wooden coasters on inverted coasters and do all this crazy stuff. And same with the no limits track stuff. I, I, I thought they were going to add the preset uh, inversions and corkscrew twists and all those things to the wooden coasters and every other coaster. I was completely wrong. I assumed wrong. So uh, it's, it's really just allowing you to do steeper drops and and uh, inclines on the hyper and giga coasters. That's still pretty cool. It gives us more options. Swapping the trains, I thought we were gonna see some pretty crazy stuff come out of that as well but for, for the most part i don't think we're going to see too much drastic drastic changes in the coaster spotlights uh the new three coasters will be fun for those and uh obviously the scenario mode is incredible it's just it's it's a game changer so for me the the biggest thing of this update is the scenario mode and it's it's good that you know it's the anniversary it's a perfect time to bring it in it's just going to add a whole another amazing year to planet coaster it's going to be even better than the first year obviously we have all this content Content now um, from the entire year and all the DLCs now we got scenario mode and we got to put that all together into one amazing experience I'm quite happy about this update um, the, the the benches and stuff are really cool lots of tiny tiny quality of life changes and some staff things so it's pretty cool overall I think it's 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 the best update in terms of just we have scenario mode now guys get playing get building get crafting those scenarios uh, that's just adds tons and tons of resources playability to the game and then there's some nice bells and whistles added on i thought i thought there was going to be some crazy stuff with these coasters that was going to completely change the coaster spotlights now maybe there is i know there's some really crafty people in this community and they're going to look at some of these uh no limit options and coaster train swaps and uh come up with something quite unique that we wouldn't have thought of. I'm, I'm still curious to see what people end up coming up with. And if you do something unique and crazy and, and out of this world different that uh, you didn't think was possible with the train swaps and no limits, um, be sure to send it in as a coaster spotlight and explain to me exactly what it is that you did, what cars you swapped, what track it is originally, what train it is now, and what kind of uh, no limit options you uh, took advantage of. Um, and then we'll hopefully get some more interesting spotlights out of this update for the most part. I'm really looking forward to seeing the parks with all the benches and the eating areas. I can't wait to see the food courts come to life with all the guests just scouring about eating their food and stuff. Uh, I still wish the benches themselves were updated. And honestly, this barrier feature is just amazing. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> I absolutely love that and it's got me excited to go back to building shops and facilities because it's going to allow me to make more compact shops. So amazing. There it is everybody. 
complete breakdown. Hopefully I didn't forget anything. I took another look through the patch notes and I didn't, I don't think I'm missing anything major here. And uh, if I did, I'll, I'll try and do another video in the future here, but I'm pretty sure that's all of it. So happy anniversary, Planet Coaster fans. Thank you, Frontier, for the amazing game. And that's going to do it for this video, guys. I hope you all enjoyed. And if you did, smash that like button, share on social media. If you're new to the channel, subscribe for more daily Planet Coaster videos. And if you guys want to support the show and keep it going, you can do so by becoming a patron. All right, everybody. Thank you guys so much for watching. And I hope you all have a wonderful day. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye now. <laughs>